In this video, we're going to focus on the Canvas background color plugin basically in Chart.js Part 3. So we're going to focus on this plugin that we have on the documentation. And here it becomes far more interesting because let's just scroll down here. There are a few things that you might wonder. Say, hey, what about this? And I have it as well. So let's remove, first of all, before I even do something, I want to remove all of the excess codes here because this we don't need anymore. This is all redundant then it's already given now how to make this work so i will not spend time anymore on this but what i do want to spend time on it is how can we soft code this one here because this here that's not really practical who wants to have a default green light green color like this as you can see here we want this to be soft coded but we want it like a real plugin so what we're going to do is we're going to create basically how a real plugin should be created just like what we've seen with the um chart.js plugin labels data labels and uh, the zoom option etc etc so how do we build this in just basically in here because if you've seen this and you've seen my other videos you say why are they doing this and why they're not creating what we're very used to in here in the options and in the options we're going to put in here we say plugins Plugins, and then here would be the plugin name. Yeah, like, like streaming, was one of my uh, plugins that I covered was streaming. Here would be the plugin name. First of all, the plugin name in this case is not really uh, a practical plugin name because it's called just plugin, which is understandable, very simple. I guess the documentation they were there focus was just to show you some samples. But if you really want to figure out this, this doesn't make any sense. So let's start to do this one. So. My question for you, and this may be a good exercise, can you figure out, first of all, how would you convert this into the right plugin name? And it's, uh, to be honest, it's quite a simple one, but I'm going to let you explore that one because that's a good exercise to know. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to save this and I'm going to let you work on, and I would like, I want to have another name. And the name will be, uh, instead of this, we can say here, checker background. So that will be the plugin name. So I'll give you a few seconds, pause the video, and try to do this. How can you change the name of the plugin? And then eventually we're going to use it with the options. All right, so I hope you were able to figure out something. It's quite, it's probably very straightforward, but let's start and explore. First of all, we want to have a appropriate name, which would be, uh, uh, what is it? A checker, checker background, or BG doesn't matter. So that's the plugin name. Basically, here we have a checker design, and then that's the plugin name. So that will be the ID name as well. The ID is the identifier of it that will be eventually used in the options. But of course, we have to do a few things. First of all, this here must be changed as well, and then finally we're going to change this here as well. So that's basically what you need to do. That's it. So if you do that, you refresh, you're done. Of course, we're not 100% done, but this is the way how we basically give it a name. Now we want to put it in here. And what we want to do here eventually is this. We say here, plugins. And in the plugins, we're going to say here, check our background. All right. And in here, we're going to start doing whatever we want. But of course, we don't have anything yet. And the reason why is we need to connect it with the options. Very, very important here. So let's start and explore here this check this out here this is the one that we're going to pinpoint first and all we're going to do here is the following we're going to say here arcs for arguments comma and then we say here options so we want to make sure that this is connected and what we really want to do is we want to soft code what exactly we want to soft code this specific item we could soft code this as well this is to be honest a quite advanced feature we're going to colors we can i will show you later on as well or maybe we can do that as an exercise how we could change this, but here we have this one here. So in Chart.js, they have basically used a shorthand and the shorthand creates a certain name here. So how are we going to give this another name? Because in, in Chart.js, if you would go like here, we have background colors. The original term for background color is called the fill style. That's it. So that's what they call it, but they rename it into background color because it's more descriptive and more more clear for you as the user. 
Uh, this is why when they have those breaking changes or those changes in the, in the every new version, for example, if you remember with the um, donut chart here, they have the percentage cut cutout or cut out percentage, and now it's not anymore cut out percentage. It's called just cut out, and then you put in here the I'm not sure if, was, uh, if let me double check if it's a percentage sign or just ninety. Refresh, all right, then it's just 90, it should be like this, or something like that. I have to double check, cut out, it's, oh, sorry, maybe this one, cut out, small. And then it's in percentage, save that, there you are. Yes, yeah, so because it's a string now, and it's called cut out, and normally it's cut out percentage. In charging as 2, it was called cut out percentage, all right. So what they did was they, they shortened it because they give you a percentage number, However, this is not the real term of it, because this probably is something related to width or, or thickness of the border. There's another, sh but they give it a shorthand, all right? So this is very important to remember, so they just simplify it in easier terms that you can understand as a designer or a developer. Makes sense? The entire, every programming language is basically zeros and ones, so basically binary code, and basically it's converted whatever we have here into certain binary codes or at least that's that's the entire process so what we're going to do here is basically this I want this but I want to say not anymore fill style because that I would never figure out that there will be a fill style so what I want to say here this should be the moment I do this I would say here maybe canvas background color or checker tile checker color whatever we want let's say here you'll say the tile color or tile BG how do we do this? Well, let's. We have this already, so we are now connected with also with the options. And what we want to do here then basically is say this. Let's say tile BG or background. And then here would be blue. But if we do this right now, let's save this, refresh. There is nothing happening, of course, because it's not yet activated. It doesn't understand what this means. So we're going to do this here now. All we do is this. And this is how the entire chart JS documentation works. So we say CTX fill style now equals options dot what is the name here? Tile background. And the reason why it understands this is when he figures out it's in the options, then in the plugins, and the plugins is called checker background. And we say save this, and now if we refresh, now we have a blue color. But we work here directly from the config. Uh, well, basically in the config plugins, in the plugins part of the config block, which is quite nice. Of course, this is still necessary because it's still connected, but this here creates a far more easier way to read. And now we could do even other things here if ever we have. I have no idea what we would want to do here more, but you could probably uh, change that. You can change the colors. This could be black again. And we could also do, for example, this here, the composite operations. Yeah, so we can refresh here. It is black. So let's try something else here, where we can do the, the width here. And here we could, for example, get the value of the width and put it down here. But of course, this is like a formula, so you have to really be careful how you break it down. The easiest one is just basically these items here. Like this one here, the composite operations covers multiple things. So what is the proper term for this? I have no idea. Um, basically, it has rel it's related to this, and if I'm not mistaken, it's related to this part here. The canvas rendering global composite operations, and what does it do? Uh, op basically, applying when drawing new shapes. And you can see here what will happen. It can be overlapped. It can create all kind of options here. You can see source over, source in, etc, etc. In our case, we're not overlapping any background because our tiles are just perfect match, but if we would be overlapping, let's say this 75, here 75, go back here and refresh. Oh, you can see we are now one smaller. That was not what I wanted. I wanted that one uh, 25. So, all right, so it overlaps a little bit here. What I want to do here, basically this part here, we could use here the canvas here and you will understand now if you see this really you will figure out that eventually you can almost adjust anything here in the canvas with just these commands here you can really play around with it and then uh, and if you the deeper you know canvas the more you can char change in chart itself 
So we could say here, for example, this, and then if we would have here source over, it will happen like this. Let's see if we have something with a nice response here. Uh, I have no idea. I guess this one here, darken. We can get the darken. Retain the darkness pixel both layers. All right. Let's grab this. If I put it in here, then we find. Uh, and then what I will do here is just to make sure I want to make this green. And let's see what happens. All right. I, I have no idea what, what exactly how this will work. But what I want you to do, this is a good exercise. I want you to create this one and put it in here. So how would you make a shorthand for that? You can give it any name you want. So I will just give you five seconds. Uh, I will pause the video. Just pause the video for a while and just try to do this. All right. So I hope you pause the video and you try it. So basically this here, same story, shorthand. Very simple here. Global composite. This could be meaning uh, what would be a good term for this. Uh, not this one. I want to be in here. You can see here re rendering contact global composite. And then what it really does is can we give it a descriptive term where it's easy to understand? Now basically here compositing or blending mode operations. So let's call it blending. All right. So we say here options dot blending or anything you want to give it a name. And this is the reason why it's having a descriptive name is far more better than having like this because this doesn't mean anything for most people definitely not for me so we say here blending blending would make far more sense and then we can say here darken then we can put in a darken or we can put it here light, i guess lighter as well let's double check if we have besides darken also lighter or lighten there we are well let's try that lighten save that refresh all right nothing happens really here in this case because there is no real effect and different colors in here. However, this is one of the options here. So, so basically now you have a real understanding of how you can start to work with this. And you can imagine now, I'm sure that you probably figure out something else. And that will be eventually the final exercise. Can you create in our canvas now, I want to create a line and not really a line, it could be a bar, anything here. And we go from one side to the other side. It should be just like a small bar. You can somewhere in the center it starts and then it goes from left to right. Can you figure that one out and give it a color? You're going to assign a color to it as well. Or matching color with the checkered item. We can remove the checkered things. You can use the colors as well. So try that one. I'll give you, uh, I will suggest pause the video for a while. And try to do it and I will show you afterwards how to, uh, how to do it do it in the canvas. All right, so I hope you practice this one. And I'm reason, the reason I'm doing now more and more of these exercises, I want you to be really aware what is possible with Chart.js and with the canvas, because this is a small challenge. And the goal of the challenge is to see, can you figure it out on your own? All right, to do this, basically, I want to go into hide all of these. We don't need this anymore. This is not important in our case. So we have understanding that this here is basically the color and I'm going to give it a proper name afterwards. So let's save this first. You will see here eventually the tiles will be removed. All right. And you already figured out how we can move tiles left and right and how to position them. So I assume, especially if you watch my other parts, that you should understand how to do this. You should really know this. Now. So let's start with it. But if you don't, don't worry. I'm going to show you exactly. So first of all, CTX. Yes, you're going to grab the CTX here and you're going to say here the rec fill. I'm going to fill it. The thing is, where do we want to fill it? Well, let's look at it. We had last time the, the checker design, and the checker design was a real challenge, but it was an absolute useful one to get to wrap your head around how to do this. So, what I want to do is I want to put it here. Can we put it in the center? Well, what I will do is instead of putting it in the center, I'll just say we're going to put it at, at the middle, starting from the middle. So, that would be 200 pixels here based on the formula. All right. So here we say rec or uh, fill rec equals, and then here, what is our starting point? Remember here, x0, comma, y0, comma, x1, comma, y1. All right, starting, starting and ending points. So where do I want to really end this? So in this case, 
we could make a bar just here in the center. So I'm going to just put in some hard coded codes, but just using some of the formulas that we already have, we have to calculate the center. All right. You already figured out that this here is our magic number here. And if we want to go down, let's say we want to start here somewhere. So let's say 50% here. So we say here, X will be 50%, but the, uh, oh, sorry, no, the X will not be 50%. X is zero because we're going only down. We're going to start to use the Y. The Y zero is somewhere at 50%. And then we go all to the end for 100, but the Y will not be moved at all. Because the Y stays same, or maybe we can do three or four pixel. If you want to make a line, you can put in like a three, four pixel difference. So we have a thick line. Let's start and explore this. All right. So this is basically what I want to do. I want to put in here 200 pixels. Oh, sorry, no zero. We're not going to move the uh, x value but the y value will be 200 pixels and then here the end of x is 400 meaning from when we start here so we're still in zero but we're down and then we go here all to the end all right it's 400 and then the y we don't want to move this too much we just want to make it a small bar or like a line five pixel line that will be more than sufficient so once we have this basically what you can do here but to make sure that these are of course the right terms because it's not an equal parentheses once we have this now all right you can save this and then refresh so we have now the bar all right so we're satisfied with this bar you could make it thicker wider whatever you want doesn't matter that's not really important that's not the the exercise here the exercise is really to get this here with some codes so how do we do now the remaining codes well first of all we know now all of the formulas here we know how to do this we say here zero and then we say here chart the height multiplied by 0 0.5 then we say here chart width will be just chart dot width and finally here we can say maybe chart dot height multiply by 0 0.6 or if you really want to put in the, the codes because this will be 200. We could do here 205 or something like that. So this will have like this, but you can also calculate this. Probably this here, if it's 10%, I guess 10% of 400 pixels will be maybe 40. Let's see. Refresh. Uh, oh, all right. You can see what's going on. I don't want this. That's part. That's not even what I wanted. I expected something completely different. All right. The height multiplied by 0 0.6 is not working correctly. So let's see here. Maybe we need to adjust this into a smaller item. Uh, let's do this one, 5. I was not expecting this to be so big, but of course maybe here. Let's put in this, then maybe we can do this by 1 to reduce it. All right. That's against uh, the item. So 0, 1 height means this will be the how many pixels ending, although I was expecting it to be here 205 or something like that. This is what I'm expecting. But it's not working like that. Now, all right, so I figured out I, I, I was just confused myself. And what we need to do is we have to make sure that this is, of course, 5. So what we need to specify here is then the chart. Basically, how many pixels it starts to end. So it starts here, and then how many pixels is the, the thickness of it. So in this case, 5 pixels would mean it starts at 200, and then there will be 5 pixels drawing. So this is, that's correct. Apparently, I was mistaken, so sorry about that. However, say here, and then we can say multiply by, well, if you do, 0 0.1 it will be 10% uh, it will be 40 pixels now we can say here maybe 0 0.05 we get 10 pixels only let me refresh oh. chart height of course that's not allowed because you need to have a multiplier there you are so like this we could do it even smaller maybe two two and a half percent then we get the one we want that's that's it so basically this is how you create a line and of course, with this, you could do even another line here from top to bottom. However, for now, it's not important. Most important thing here right now is that you understand. And if you have the same thing here, what you did, if you understand the structure of doing this drawing in the canvas, because 
once you understand this, you can really go extremely deep in Chart.js and create your own plugins and even customize charts as you desire. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.